wooden bolts, even though I will not be using a crossbow here. Ah, shit. Shit. Get by him and the soldier. Oh! Accidentally guard broken. I was trying to uh, slash. Use a life gem. Life gems are nice. I'm very glad that they put them in. I do wish that they didn't put the infinite life gems in, because that's just a little easy. But I do like the life gems. That was my fault. God damn it. <laughs> That's a thing with Dark Souls as well, is every death is your fault. You can never blame the game. Except for glitches. That, that is when you can blame the game. Blame? Blame. Other than that, it is your fault 100% of the time when you die. I think that's one of the reasons why Dark Souls is kind of frustrating for new players, is because that's a new feeling for it to be ex exclusively your fault when you die. You know, ow. I'm gonna spear him. I don't care about y'all. They're gonna chase me to the ends of the earth and I'm gonna be very sad. Boxes! Hollow! By the way, I'm not sure if I've said this or not, but the base enemies in this game are called Hollows. Ow. Grab this shield. Come on. Everyone over here. The party is over here, people. Oh. My. God. <laughs> I have Probably just completely fucked myself over here. <laughs> open the door, open the door, open the door. Uh, it's not that hard. On fire. Die, 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 damn it. I did it! <laughs> oh, that was hell. Alright, I grabbed my soul, right? I think I did. Damn it. I wanna parry someone. God damn it. Fuck. I wanna parry you. God damn it. I wanna parry you and show off parrying. Also, there's actually a small glitch with parrying I wanna show off. God damn it. Okay, you know what? I'm just not going to. Because I'm going to die if I try. I'll show it off another time when I'm a little more confident. <laughs> uh, up here I know is... Ooh, wait. Light torch. So uh, in this game, unlike Dark Souls 1 and I think Demon Souls, uh, you can light a torch at a bonfire and it gives you a specific amount of time to use this torch to light up dark areas. This was also used in Dark Souls 3, but not very well. That was the first time I've done that first try. Uh, the areas in Dark Souls 3 really aren't dark enough to warrant using a torch, while in here, as you could just see there, I couldn't see like two feet in front of me. Dark areas in Dark Souls 2 were handled way better than they were in uh, 3. Yeah, now that I'm clear of this room, yeah, you can't see crap in here because of that. It's probably also even harder because I'm pretty sure on the video it makes it a little darker even, potentially? I, I don't really know. So if that is the case, just uh, tell me and I'll uh, adjust the brightness accordingly. So the small white sign soapstone is used for online function as well. So uh, 
That way you can uh, summon yourself into other people's worlds and help them with the game. Uh, the entire online aspect of this game takes place within um, the campaign. So while you're running through the game trying to beat it, other people are trying to come in and kill you at the same time. Or help you if they're using a, a white soapstone, which the small white sign soapstone uh, makes you a shade so you can only temporarily help people, while a normal white sign soapstone allows you to stay in a world semi-permanently. It's pretty much just until either you die or you kill a boss. Also, I'm going to show off a speedrun strat quickly. Around right here, if you aim down, right there. If you aim down and throw a firebomb, you can get the fire to clip through just. Oh, right there actually is a white sign soapstone. Um, Malik Drum 6 is this guy's name. Seems to be using a bastard sword with pretty much my same armor setup. But, um, that trick that I just did there is, um, if you aim down sort of towards like the, um, a uh, sort of corner area right there of the wall with a firebomb and throw it in that specific corner you can get the fire to clip through just right and reach one of the barrels that will explode the wall and that way you can very quickly uh, make your way through this area without having to go through over there so try to actually kill this iron flag so you can get some good stuff from him there so I, wait, actually I might be able to... Fuck. Ah, fuck. Damn it. Alright. This spear guy made my job a lot harder. Ow. Fucking... So. This time, I'm going to kill those guys down there first, and then I'm going to try the ironclad. So, spear guys are one of the hardest in this game because of their shield. They also have, like, infinite traps. So, it is very hard to actually get around their attacks and find openings to really hit them. Oh, that reminds me, I already have one of those to put on. Alright, now my ugly face is covered. Uh, um, the guard break you can use to get past shields, but it is actually kind of hard with uh, spear guys because they attack very fast. There we go. Get down. Alright, and then this last attack. Ah, uh, you didn't drop anything good, but I got some tools for them. So that's good. I'm now out of fire bombs. Uh, up here is where you will get a sort of sneak peek at a boss called the Pursuer. Well, by a sneak peek, I mean there he is, and if I'm not quick enough, he is going to attack me. So I'm going to quickly grab all these items up here, and then before he can kill me, there he is, I'm going to get down. He's going to. Oh. Yeah, it was not very quick, but yeah, that is the Pursuer right there. There is an exploit with him where, um, essentially, if you can uh, get up there and come down to this bonfire quickly enough with the bird carrying him over the uh, uh, hillside, if you rest at the bonfire, it won't unload him, but it will unload the bird, which will then drop him out of the world and kill him with falling damage, which is a very good way to... Uh, uh, kill him without actually properly fighting him, but I think in doing so, you don't get his item? It's either you don't get his item, or you don't get his soul, which is very good to have for strength builds. I'm not going to be doing that, but it's still good to have for extra souls, which I can use to upgrade. I fucking hate So that right there was a guard break. This guy's still here. I'm gonna summon him. 
So this is the online component of this game. Getting gesture to people. Those stuff. Yeah. Alright. So I'm going to have him help me through this area down here, which is how I will get uh, some pretty good um, uh, souls and a white sign soap set. Don't you dare. Okay. So, his bastard sword is probably upgraded at this point because uh, in order to get the uh, bastard sword, um, I'm pretty sure you need to kill hollow soldiers with it. Either that or I think you can actually find it in the Lost Bastille. Yeah, his sword is definitely upgraded. Uh, Great Soul Arrow is a spell for this game. Uh, what that does is basically just shoots out like a magic missile from D&D. Uh, do I have a shield? I think I have a shield. Right. Okay, didn't need it. Alright, so uh, some chests in this game are trapped. Uh, there are four different quote-unquote traps. There is one good trap. Uh, the four traps are a crossbow that comes out and shoots you. Uh, what you just saw there was a poison bomb. There is a normal fire bomb that comes out and explodes on you. And then the last one is actually a good one, which is a small red orb comes out and heals you. There is technically a fifth one, but not really. It's a unique one to a specific chest. What that one does is, in its specific area, it uh, summons spiders to come attack you. The life ring also increases health. I'll go over this stuff a bit more slowly, closer to the end of the playthrough, so y'all can see my build. So I'm also going to be skipping dialogue for now, because it's not important, really. <laughs> like, if you want the lore, go see Vaddy Vidya. He goes through all the lore of all these games, and... Okay, good. It, the lore is really good. Um, if I'm asked to do it, then I'll go ahead and uh, talk about the lore a bit, because I am pretty big into Dark Souls 2 lore, personally. I did help a lot with discovering some of its secrets, but uh, it, oh, overall the uh, dialogue pretty much just tells you character stories. Uh, his dialogue just then was essentially telling me, in here is a trap. You know, actually, no, hmm, no, I won't skip dialogue anymore. I'll skip his still, because it's... Like I just said, it's basically him just saying in here's a trap and I have an online player in here that I don't want to make wait. So, yeah. I just want to show off the online component. After this, I won't be summoning anymore. Well, I hope we can. Oh. Right. It allows with luck. So that also is a mild-mannered pate. Uh, he and it... The fuck happened here? He and a guy named... Crichton, Creighton, I don't remember how to pronounce his name. Uh, essentially, they are mortal enemies. Hate is a... Basically, both of them are supposed murderers who think the other has done something wrong. And it is pretty much up for debate on who's right or wrong. I personally side with uh, Crichton. Uh, a lot of people side with Pate. Uh, I don't know. It, it's a cool little thing. Uh, another thing this game also has is probably going to be the least cut episode, so I might actually just have this first recording be its full own episode. Uh, edited down to like a 20, 30 minutes, I don't know. But, um, uh, another big thing is, uh, covenants in this game. Ow, ow, ow. Fuck. Um, covenants are essentially a version of factions slash religions where once you join them they'll give you like special powers uh, usually in the form of a ring that you put on 
Like, uh, the Rat Covenant, once you join that one, allows you to summon invaders into your world rather than them just invading you. And you can set up traps to kill them. Ow, get out of my way! Retard! Okay. Ah, careful. Okay. There we go. Right. Ooh, I am playing here. Never mind. Actually, that's really good still. Uh, human effigy. I am going to get the halberd because that will be the best bet for me uh, to get like a sort of early twin blade. What the fuck? That? Okay, so y you saw those hollows up in that window, right? They were supposed to come down and attack me. They did. That was odd. <laughs> Okay. okay. Another uh, smaller thing with this game as well is you can, um, he's killing them, is uh, you can one hand and two hand your weapon, which two handing scales with strength, uh, one handing scales with both strength and dex. So if you're a dex character, two handing isn't the most useful thing in the world, but you can do it still. Like, for a Twin Blade, actually, uh, despite it being a dex weapon, it is recommended that you two-hand it because it gives you a much better move set for the Twin Blade. Eh. So, uh... So these here are NPC summons, where I can get... Uh, that new guy sells sword Luet and mild mannered pate because I helped mild mannered pate. All right, so now I have a little army and we are going to take on our first boss, which this boss is the last giant. Uh, I'll go into a little bit of lore with the last giant later still because his story is one of my favorites, but. I can't really explain it very well just yet. I'm going to wait until a bit later in the game. Like, closer to the end of the game later. This also will not be an all boss run. Because there is, uh, in the DLCs, there are multiplayer bosses, which these bosses are, uh, let's see, Sir Long, the blue smells of demon. Uh, let's see, Sir Long, the blue smells of demon, the gank squad, and, uh, Luden's out. I will be doing the DLCs in their entirety. I will actually be doing Surlon, because Surlon, to a small degree, is required for the Iron Crown DLC. About him. But, um, the three DLCs are the Ivory Crown, the Iron Crown, and the Sunken Crown. The Sunken Crown has the Gang Squad, and its two main bosses are Elana and Sin. Uh, then there's the Iron Crown, which its main boss is Rain, but its secondary main boss is Sir Alon, which he is technically a multiplayer boss, but he does have a semi-required item behind him, which is very good to have. Uh, after that is, uh, well, actually also the Iron Crown for its other multiplayer boss is the Blue Smelter Demon, but, um, after that is the Ivory Crown, which has, uh, Ava 
and the Ivory King, which the Ivory King is um, pretty much like a version of Artorius. Yeah, he's cool, I guess. <laughs> he's pretty famous in the community, but I, eh, I don't particularly like him. That's about 6,000 right there. 